Representing OVE, Sammy Callahan. Sammy, how's it going? How's it going? I'm sorry, you made me cough. I'm good, Rock. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that does these anymore because you love hearing my voice. So much. I do, and uh, along with yourself, we also would like to welcome uh, representing LAX Conan. Yo, what's up? We in the cut, and we easy like Sunday morning, even though it's Thursday morning. Boom. Gotcha. Uh, let me ask both of you two, and uh, uh, Sammy, perhaps you can answer it first. How are things going for you? And reflect back on uh, Barbed Wire Massacre and where things are at for OVE. Things are going great. Even though we lost Barbed Wire Massacre, uh, I don't think any team really won or lost in that because uh, we all got a chance to show what we did. We set the world on fire exactly like we said we were going to do. And now we're on to bigger and better things after this. Uh, LAX is going on to do a few with someone else. And uh, as you can see by this Thursday, uh, I may have bitten off more than I can swallow by attacking Bobby Lashley. But this Thursday, first time ever, one-on-one, this death machine versus Bobby Lashley. Let's see what's going to happen. Conan, what's, uh, what's the latest and greatest in the LAX world? Yeah, just incredible stuff. You know, the LAX family still intact. You know, Homicide, Diamante, and, of course, the tag team champions. Uh, we said we'd get our belts back, and we did. We did that uh, massacre, barbed wire massacre match where I think everybody went out there and literally put their bodies on the line, and, and it's gotten great reception, and that's what we're in the business for, to, you know, be noticed and to be the best, and right now we are the best. All righty, well, guys, I, I appreciate it. We're going to open up at this point for media questions. Hi, Conan. This is Raj Gary with Wrestling Inc. How are you doing today? Yo, what's up, Raj? Uh, I wanted to ask you about Rey Mysterio. He's kind of been all over the place, and I, I know there were talks uh, about him possibly signing with Impact. Um, how is he doing right now, and, and where do you kind of anticipate him showing up or ending up? Yeah, I don't know. He, um, you know, he's had an incredible year. Uh, it was very important for him to leave WWE and and uh, you know do things on his his own terms, and he has. And I know that um, that uh, Impact has reached out to him, and uh, obviously WWE did. And that's obviously a decision that he's going to be making pretty soon. I hope to have him over here, obviously, because um, we have you know um, a great history together, and you know ADRs here, and that whole Latino movement. But um, at the end of the day, is who's going to make him the best offer for him? Because the one thing I know 100% for sure, he will never go back on a full-time schedule. Uh, okay, so there was a kiss that featured Sammy uh, from New Japan, which became quite a viral sensation. So what I wanted to know his thoughts on the same. You know, I think what he means is, you know that guy, um, you know how they have Kenny Omega and Ibushi uh, Callahan as the Golden Lovers? Nothing. Uh, he wants to know if, can you hear me or no? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, w- what is the question? Because I don't understand it myself. I- I'm not sure any of us have understood it. It was something about uh, some incident in New Japan, which I I, I apologize I did not. Is there something with? Did you wrestle Kojima Callahan? Is that I keep hearing that name. Hello, S- Sammy. Let's see where Sammy Hello? at. Well, Sammy got so hot he just get off the line. <laughs> Could I tell you what I thought he was saying, uh, Ross? Yeah, go ahead. You know that, are you aware that Kenny Omega... Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you now, Sammy. Okay, cool. Yeah, it kicked me off, and then I had to come in and say I was going to ask the question, and then it let me back in. Sammy, he kept saying something about Kojima. Did you wrestle him, or were you supposed to wrestle him or something like that? Uh, I wrestled Kojima while I was at New Japan. It was absolutely amazing. I, I love Kojima. He's one of my uh, favorite wrestlers and inspirations in wrestling. So to get a chance to lock up with him was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think that's where he was going. going. All right. And I apologize if that was not exactly what your question uh, was, but I don't think any of the three of us truly understood or could hear the question. So uh, I apologize on, on, on that.
I, for hey, some reason, you know, Sammy. Yes. You know how uh, Ibushi and Omega are the golden lovers? Yeah. I think he wanted to know if maybe you and uh, Crimson would be the redheaded lovers, but that that might have been lost in translation. Fair enough. Not, nothing? All right. Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ross, who's next? Uh, this is Darren Simmons from ImpactAsylum.net. This question is for Conan. Conan, you, you're the man with the top tag team in Impact, arguably the country with AX, but you also you're involved with another tag team, which is one of the hottest free agent tag teams out there with the Lucha Brothers with uh, Pentagon and Phoenix. Is there any possibility we might be seeing what I guess some would classify as a dream match anytime soon in Impact with um Pentagon and Phoenix coming in and squaring off against LAX, kind of putting two of you, two of your crews against each other. Yeah, that would be dope. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of problems because uh, AAA owns the intellectual property of Phoenix and Pentagon, so they've stopped them from working in certain places, including Impact. But I think now with the uh, um, symbiosis that there is, tremendous word for Latino between you know, triple A and impact that maybe we can finally get that rectified. And I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, cause I know Callahan has squared up with both of them over there in AAW and other places. I wouldn't mind seeing him in OVE against homicide in LAX. That would be another great matchup, but definitely I'm looking forward to it. And I am trying to work behind the scenes to make that happen. Yeah. And if I, if I can interject in here, Pentagon and Phoenix are guys that, Myself, Dave, and Jake have feuded all over the world. It's it's past the point of a rivalry right now. We tore masks off each other. We bled. We have went the most extreme you can go in professional wrestling with each other. But through that time, we've learned to respect each other. And we, we became something we like to call L family. A little bit of Spanglish, but that's our group of guys. And any company that can secure Pentagon and Phoenix will benefit from it, no matter where they wrestle on the planet. We have an uh, internet question directed at uh, Conan, but it actually he, he wants a uh, a Sammy reply as well. Uh, Conan, are your in ring wrestling days done? Would you ever come back to wrestling? And uh, do you ever th- think about what uh, Sammy did to you with that fireball? As if you were in the ring, you'd want a one on one with Sammy. Yeah, the March eighth. I think it's March eighth. I'm going to get my uh, hip surgery. And uh, I'm going to go into intensive training with my boy, Ray Mysterio, which would be some of the... And I'm going to get in shape. And I do want to do a, um, a um, like a farewell tour. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to do something with Sammy or anybody else that, you know, um, that captures my interest. Obviously, we have a score to settle. I don't know if I can get back into shape to have a one-on-one. But definitely a trios match could definitely be in the uh, in the future. I'm not gonna lie; I'm not afraid to set you on fire. It might happen. No well, good. Bring it. I, I just hope that you know while you're out there, you know, attacking people be- from behind and taking a playbook out of LAX. Because remember, bro, I was taking them and shaking them in Miami while you were playing marbles and watching Sesame Street. We, you never know. We may get you. Hey, you don't. You, you don't bring Sesame Street into this. You don't need to bring well, Sesame Street into this. I just did. I went there. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. My question is for Sammy Callahan. Uh, Sammy, when we last spoke, it was in the lead-up to Barbed Wire Massacre. Um, now that the match has aired, what has the feedback been like, and specifically in terms of airing it on Twitch as opposed to traditional television? Uh, I think it was something that uh, it definitely launched the Twi- Twitch platform. And uh, the only thing... You can't always make all the fans happy. It sure, there was an amazing sense of achievement of what we had accomplished and uh, the buzz we got from. But there's still people that weren't happy. They weren't happy. There wasn't enough blood. There wasn't enough this. Or there wasn't enough that. I'm just saying we got pretty violent. But today's day and age, a lot of times you can't do blood. That's out of our hands. That's out of the company's hands. That determines the network. This was originally supposed to air on national television. That's why we didn't believe in it. And then last minute, we decided to put it on Twitch so we can show the whole match. But even without Flood, I think the picture that we, we told was something absolutely amazing. 
Sammy, you have a question from Lee Mead at a live radio. Uh, How do you feel you, uh, you make the, your, your debut uh, at the biggest impact event of the year, Bound for Glory? Did, was that any more pressure on you? Uh, and how did you think it uh, came out? I absolutely love the pressure. I loved everything I've done since uh, I came to Impact. Uh, me coming to Impact not only uh, sparked interest for me, I feel like it sparked stuff for Impact as well. I think it's a very good relationship mutually because we're both benefiting from it. And uh, this is just the start of things for me uh, in Impact. I'm not going to lie. This year, my focus is on one thing, and that's becoming the Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, you know, he's got what it takes to be the world champion and, you know, pressure makes diamonds. So, you know, it's just how you, how you, how you deal with pressure. And, um, that's just, you know, some, that's part of the game. You know, uh, he, uh, I think Sammy, I will say this for him. He's done a great job of, um, branding himself, of going to new Japan, of, you know, going to Lucha Underground, of going to impact, of making sure he stays relevant. And so, like I said, we've got our eyes on them and sooner or later, we're going to hook up again, and we're going to make it much more memorable than the first time. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Sammy, you've worked a little bit of everywhere, or at least been seen on TV a little bit of everywhere over the last year. How was that different from a couple of years ago? Because it didn't seem like that was an option for, for virtually anybody a few years ago, let alone uh, the, the number of wrestlers that are doing it now. Well, wrestling's changing right now, uh, the time and age of the territories of people working against each other is is at an, its all-time end. Like, it's not going to happen anymore. Wrestling has to change. I think Impact finally realizes that. I think the wrestling world is starting to realize that. WWE, like it or not, has a monopoly on wrestling, and they might always have. But there can be a true alternative if everyone else works together. It just shows the amount of wrestling fans there are in the world. Last year for WrestleMania weekend, there was 200,000 people in Orlando, but only, what, 80,000 went to WrestleMania? So there was an equal amount of people, if not more there, just to do all the other events, the conventions, watch all the other shows. So it's a really cool time to be a professional wrestler. And me, personally, being able to show up everywhere, I think it kind of helps my character, it helps my gimmick to the fact that I am the worldwide desperado. You never know where I'm going to show up. I'm blazing trails and being a cowboy, and that's what I'm always going to be. And right now, where I am in my life, being able to wrestle for Impact, Lucha Underground, sometimes New Japan, you never know where I'm going to show up, and I always like to have that allure about me. And, Conan, you've had your hands dipped in, in several promotions as well. Like, What do you think about, about the changes that have been made <clears throat> in that regard? Bro, I've been advocating that people should be working together for years. It's been, you know, I've always been a guy that's tried to break the exploitation and the monopoly that there is in wrestling. And it's just, you know, like, for example, I remember one time when I was working for Crash, we did this thing with the Hardy Boys. And just because the referee, uh, I think it was maybe Marty Elias, had shown up on Crash uh, and, and they showed that match on, on Impact, they sent them a cease and desist letter. And so we actually digitalized the referee's face, and it was that petty. It's like, really, dude, that's what you're, you're, you're getting mad about? We should all be fighting. We should all be uniting because at the end of the day, we're all fighting for breadcrumbs, you know, and if, um, and if we all get together, we can make a big pie, you know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that finally Impact is working with AAA and, and uh, everybody's starting to kind of work together because, like, you know, now the power's in the wrestler's hands and people are like, you know, Sammy and, and uh, the Young Bucks and Joey Ryan and, you know, Ricochet before he went to WWE were clear examples of that. You can make, you know, Matt Riddle, you can make really good, the Lucha Brothers, you can make really good money, you know. Uh, and so now the power's gone back to the wrestler. And I think promotions have recognized that unless they start, you know, uh, being more just and fair in the way that they work with talent, that talent isn't going to want to work with them. Thank you, guys. We have a uh, follow-up question from Simon in the U.K. He wanted to know, based on your comment earlier, uh, Sammy first and then Conan, who is your favorite Sesame Street character? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going with the Cookie Monster all day, every day. All day, every day. That's what's happening. Cookie Monster. 1,000%. 1,000%, bro. At least we can agree on something. Yes, that might be the only one. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com. 
Uh, Conan, you produced a lot of music in the past, and when I saw that you were going to be on the call, I just got curious. Are you still uh, dabbling in some music, or is wrestling pretty much taking up all your time? Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing so many things right now. Obviously, there's a there's a part of me that would like to go back to that, and maybe in Aero Lucha, I might do some stuff for uh for some um you know wrestlers entrance music, but um you know my mind is is really focused on a couple of things: Impact, you know, uh, Aero Lucha, you know, uh, Rey Mysterio, and myself uh, getting back in shape and doing my my. Um, my farewell tour. So it doesn't leave much time for music, but it's not out of the question. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sportsfeeder again. Uh, my question is to Conan. Uh, so around 20 years ago, we saw you join the NWO. Do you have any memories of the event? Um... You know, the only thing that I remember is that they were the hottest thing in wrestling, and I was very honored that they picked me to, to be in there. The only thing is, is that at that time, you know, the NWO basically was so big that they actually had an A team, a B team, and a C team. So I wasn't really part of the NWO when it was at its zenith, but um, I was with the Wolfpack, you know, and uh, at that time, that was a big honor for me because, you know, you had Nash. Macho Man, Sting, and Luger, who were all bigger stars than me. And so I got a big rub off of that, and it really helped catapult my career. Sean Ross Tapp of Fightful.com again. Uh, Sammy, I know that you've uh, been on a couple of cards with Brian Pillman Jr., who has just kind of started his wrestling journey. Do you have any impressions of him early on and, and what you think of him? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pillman Jr. has started training with me, Dave and Jake, at the OI4 Wrestling, OI4K Wrestling Academy in Dayton, Ohio, which has opened up. Which we have like 23 students right now, but uh, he'd already been training for a little bit at OVW, uh, and he wanted to just uh, train under some new people, learn some new things, and we've kind of taken him under our wing now for the last couple weeks, and uh, he's hungry, he has a great look, he's, he's going to be a big star, like it or not, no matter what. So I'd rather him jump on our bandwagon and be part of our team where we can get him and uh, really help him and gear him towards the right direction. And Conan, any thoughts of that? Have you, have you seen any of uh, Pillman Jr. yet? No, I have not. I met him when he – I actually went to the Brian Pillman Memorial, so he was like a little kid at that time. Um, yeah, I haven't seen nothing of him, and I hope that, you know, uh, he pick, p picked up a lot of his dad's characteristics because his dad was one of my favorite – realest guys that ever existed in this business and i and i and i give a little shout out to sammy and his crew because they're they're starting to produce a lot of talent out there i've actually used a couple other boys and then uh they're well trained like i used trey miguel um who's another guy that i used from 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 your camp uh sammy uh what was the question again i'm sorry you kind of broke up at the end i, I was actually putting you over which will be the last time during this call which was I was saying that you have a school and you've been putting out some really good prospects because he was asking me about Brian Pillman Jr. And I used Trey Miguel, and there's another guy I used from that you guys trained that was very good too. I mean, you guys are starting to really produce some good, uh, you know, uh, talent down there. Absolutely. Uh, we brought Trey Miguel into the world, and uh, now he's working for Aero Lucha, and he's going to start blowing up even more this year. We have Zachary Wentz and Desmond Xavier. Desmond Xavier already wrestling for Impact Wrestling. Big star there. Uh, they're over at Dragon Gate right now, absolutely killing it together. Uh, now we have Brian Pillman Jr. We have a lot of really good young guys coming through our system. Uh, we're trying to build our own territory in the Midwest. Uh, we're trying to build our own thing and say where the Midwest is where it's at in America right now. We just had uh, MJF and Ace Romero, who are two great young guys, moved to our area gum under our wing and uh, start working for all of our promotions. And uh, this is just the start of things. We're going to have more and more and more and more people uh, move in. We just got a, a wrestler that just moved here from Syria that wanted to start training uh, that speaks Arabic and a couple other languages that he has a ton of potential. Uh, the sky's the limit for our school right now. And I think in the next couple of years, like our guys are going to be the guys uh, getting booked everywhere. I kind of wanted to get... Uh, your thoughts on just how different it is working with Impact in, in terms of uh, your promos and, and working a match as opposed to your time when you were with NXT? Uh, one thing I'll say about Impact is 
And it's something I absolutely love is the atmosphere. Everything's laid back. It's not something that they don't try to be something that they're not. Like we, we go in, we have a good time and we kill it. We do work and we go on to the next day. And that's how we film television. And impact is the first company that's kind of pulled the reins off me and been like, you know what do and say whatever you want to do. And then when I go a little too far, believe me, I hear it when I come to the back, but I'm at a point in my career right now. I'd rather say sorry than ask for permission because that's the kind of person I am. And impact is giving me Dave and Jake, all the OVE guys, a true chance to show exactly what we bring to the table. Is the caller still there? No, no, he, he's not. Uh, did you want to add in there? Yeah. I just wanted to elaborate that, you know, I was there obviously in 2005 and that wasn't the case. And, um, it is laid back. There's a new regime. They are. Hello. Go ahead. Go on in. Yeah. Uh, there are new people in charge, and what I like about the, the atmosphere in the dressing room is basically we know that people like to throw shade. We know that a lot of mistakes were made in the past. We know that a lot of them were self-inflicted, but I think w we've looked around and we're like, yo, we're the team uh, that is going to take this to the next level, that's going to eradicate you know, all, the, you know, all the bad pub that we've had in the past, and we've got a good roster right now to do it with and people that are going to be coming in the future. So I really think you're going to be seeing a lot of good things coming out of impact, mainly because of the talent, because I've always said, as long as you have great talent, you don't have to be booking smoke and mirrors because of wrestlers limitations. We got a real good crew that can go in the, in the ring. Darren Simmons from impact asylum.net. Again, this question is actually for both Sammy and Conan. Uh, you all had a great feud with the OVE LAX, you know, climax, the, barbed wire massacre but uh wondering what kind of your thoughts of that few possibly transitioning over to the knockouts area conan of course you mentioned before diamante who's coming back from injury and sammy you have a certain uh death machine a havoc death machine that um on the female side that could possibly show up what are you all's thoughts of having having the few transition to the knockout division with the uh, with a LAX and a OVE representative. I would absolutely love to have uh, Jessica Havoc, my uh, my other half there. Uh, she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the world right now, and she, she was an Impact before. She's a former Knockouts champion, and uh, hopefully we'll see her back at Impact killing it alongside the rest of us killers because uh, that's where she needs to be. That's where she wants to be. So hopefully here in the future we see her come and be dominant like she was her first run there. Yeah, you know, Diamante, we haven't seen anything she's been able to do because she got hurt very early on in... in, in and if you, if you don't mind me interrupting you, yeah. Diamante is freaking fire. She, the, the Impact fans have no clue what that girl can do. Yeah, she's a little stick of dynamite, and, you know, she's under that, that you know, uh, LAX learning tree, you know, which is low-key, homicide, myself, you know, Santana, Ortiz... She's pumped. She's she's ready to show, you know, she's ready to earn her stripes and show that she ain't just there to be flipping up, you know, gang signs and shit. And so she's ready to go, man. She is ready to prove a point. So I can't wait to see her go in and mix it up with her Havoc, Taya, or anybody else. It's Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com. I guess I can throw this out to both of you. The Barbed Wire Massacre uh, match got such an internet buzz. When that goes down, do you guys think about that afterwards? You go, man, the Internet's really going to be talking about it, or is it just something that kind of happens organically? Absolutely. I always want to be the guy, no matter what, at the end of the tapings, I want to be the guy that everyone's talking about. And uh, since I showed up at uh, Impact, I, me and my OBE boys, along with LAX, when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of things, we're the thing that people's talking about because we're always going to go out there with everything we have, and we're going to – hell or high water try to have the best match on any event or any TV taping wherever you're going to be a part of. Now, when you're, when your prevalent mindset, which is the mindset that we all have, and by that I mean OVE and us because they have a, a similar mindset, is we're there to steer the show, bro, and that's all there is to it. So when you have, you know, four to six guys on that same thing, let's steal the show together, and, uh, you know, great things can happen. Of course, you want to m make sure that whatever you do is generating a buzz if not, why even do it? You know, so this is this is some you know, this is something that obviously you you go and you look at what your numbers are on Twitch, what your numbers are as far as like people watching your videos on YouTube, and that kind of gives you a barometer 
of um, how popular what you're doing, if it's getting over or not. And if it isn't, then you need to change something. So I think we're always all on our top of our games as far as that. All righty, Conan, Sammy Callahan, I appreciate it very much. We're going to wrap it up with that question. Uh, Conan, let's go to you for, first for the uh, a final thought. Well, the final thought is, you know, uh, uh, you know, one thing that everybody knows about me, it doesn't matter what promotion I'm in. If at the time I'm not happy, I'm going to tell you I'm not. And that's always got me uh, uh, heat. I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now in uh, an impact because much like Sammy, we have a lot of uh, – uh, creative liberties obviously you know like him we have to be pulled back a lot of times because there's stuff that can't be shown on tv you know and uh so i can't wait to see what ideas impact's going to come up with what ideas we're going to come up with and uh i know that i know that soon we're going to be meeting ov again and i can guarantee you it's going to be more memorable than the first time sammy what's the final thought on your end uh, I have to pretty much say the same thing. Uh, I'm a busy guy. I'm traveling all over the world and wrestling for almost every major company on the planet. Uh, I'm running my own shows with the Wrestling Revolver and uh, doing all the nuts and bolts of that. But the chance to get Impact and truly make a difference where we're going through a big change in Impact. Things are changing, but they're changing for the better. TNA is about to get to back to where it needs to be, and that's focusing on wrestling and having some of the best wrestling action in the world. And I think within the next month, Impact Wrestling, along with myself, the rest of OVE and LAX, uh, we're going to be cornerstones and show people exactly why Impact is one of the places to be, along with the incoming Brian Cage, who's debuting tonight, and a lot of other people on their way in, people on their way out. Things are changing for the better. And uh, if, if you're doubting it, if you're truly doubting, I'm telling you, turn into night to Impact Wrestling live on top and watch me and Bobby Lashley have an absolute barn burner in a match that no one is going to expect. <laughs>